Hey everybody, welcome back to Icarus Mods. Uh, today I'm going to go over uh, how to set up the new Icarus Mod Manager 2.0. Um, bear with me, um, my throat's been bothering me lately, so I do have a little bit of a cough. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go to my GitHub page. There'll be a link down in the description below. So once you pull up the GitHub page, it will look like this. You want to click on the Mod Manager 2.0.0 pat, not the patch, the actual Mod Manager. That patch, anytime you see a patch on my GitHubs, that's used by the Mod Manager to update. So you want the full version. So you'll click on that and it'll pop this up. If you look over here to the right, you'll see there's a download raw file. You're going to want to click on that. So when you download the raw file, you'll see it pops up here and it's downloaded. Uh, once you downloaded it, <coughs> you can close this, uh, open up the zip file and this will, this is what's inside of it. So you're going to want to extract it. I extracted it to the Icarus modding folder. And then I created a Icarus mod manager folder and I exact extracted it into there. So you'll see it has the same thing in there. Once you have it extracted, you'll go ahead and run it. And it will pop up the settings. You're going to want to select your uh, Icarus contents folder. So you just click on the dots there and it's on my games drive programs 86 steam steam apps common icarus icarus content once you have that selected go ahead and click select folder and you'll see it looks just like the Example above, click Save Changes. It's going to tell you to, in order for that to take effect, it needs to close the program. So when you close this, it's going to go ahead and close that program down and restart it. So once it starts back up, you'll be presented with this pop-up. Uh, I do appreciate donations. It does help a lot with all the hours I put into this. And all the mods I make, I buy a lot of the models for my mods from uh, the Unreal Marketplace, which costs money. Uh, sometimes people donate money for me to buy mod the models and stuff like that, and I put them in game. So uh, it does help, and I appreciate it. Uh, this will only pop up for the first few times that you run Mod Manager. Eventually, it'll stop popping up. Um, so close that and then you'll be presented with the mod manager 2.0 so as of right now you're going to want to update the data folder it's going to say update has been done and then you want to close it down again close it down and then you'll see it produced the right any files and the readme and then you can click on it again And it will bring it back up and you'll be and you're all set. Uh, to start downloading mods, you're gonna to want to click on the down, download mods, and you can see that this is all blank. And if you've used my previous mod manager, you'll see that the font's totally different. I increased the font. I had a lot of complaints, people having a hard time reading, scrolling through here. So you're gonna to want to update local database. And I'm not going to do it now because the first time you do it, it does take a while to update the database. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to mine that's already updated. And you'll see the font size is a lot bigger. It's easier to read. Um... The update local databases, you'll see that it's on the left-hand side now. It used to be on the right, and a lot of people had problems finding it because if you have Windows scaling, 
enabled. For some reason, it would take that button and slide it right off the UI and you wouldn't be able to see it. So I put it on the left now. So the update button is on the left. Um, the rest of it has stayed pretty much the same. Display all mods, displays all of them. You'll see the ones in gray are the ones that are already installed. The ones that are red, if you'll see the installed version I have is 1.0. The uh, version available is 2.7. So if it's in red, you'll see that it needs an update. Um, the filtering works the same. You can filter by author. So if you want to look at all mine, you change this to all. Click filter. So this is all mine. They've already all been installed. Um, you can do Dexter's filter and you'll see all Dexter's mods. <clears throat> the next section filter is pack or X mods. So if you look down here at the bottom, I'll highlight this right here. Whatever mod you're selecting up here, it'll tell you tell you where what the link is to the file. If it's in X mods, you don't really need to worry about the compatibility unless there's a game breaking issue. But for the most part, if it's in X mods, it'll install fine. Um, so you can filter by X mods or you can filter by pack. And that also filters by the author. So Dexter doesn't have any pack. I don't have any pack. Um, let's see. These are all pack files. So you'll notice the compatibility for the week is 103. All his mods are updated to week 103 because they are all pack mods. And if you look down here, you'll see it says pack. PAK at the end, meaning that it's a pack file. So it contains all the games for each full file that's modded. It contains all the JSON, where an X mods only contain contains the changes. Excuse me, only contains the changes that were made to that file. So that's why the pack files have to be updated weekly before you download them. But the X mods do not and not everybody does x mods and not everybody does pack files like i don't do any pack mods and you'll see all my mods say all for compatibility so at any point you can download them and extract them and they'll work uh, the next section is search so you can search by descriptions let me clear all these So if you want to, I have stack typed in there. So if you want to look for any stack mods that adjust the stack size, you can search description. So it pulls up all the ones that have stack and you can see stack, stack in the descriptions and then search title. And all the ones that say stack in the title. So if you're looking for a specific mod for like weather, you would type weather in there and then you're going to want to click them both. You're going to want to click this to see what's available and click title to see what's available. Because sometimes, like if you would just click title, the other one would have never showed up because it doesn't contain weather in the title. But it does have in the description. And this basically allows all the, out, the crafting benches to all be placed outside and not have to worry about weather. So, and then to download them, you'll just... Double click it and it will uh, <coughs> excuse me, automatically extract it and put it in your mods folder. So let me close this, go back into the mod manager. Um, if you notice on the left now, there's no underscores. It no longer uses the files. And that's the reason why this is not backwards compatible with the previous versions of mod manager. So if you open up the folder for this, you will see that, <coughs> excuse me, 
It no longer has all the mods listed in the main folder. All the mods are now inside an extracted mods folder and it contains the files for the mod and the extracted mod file. So it, it's stored in one spot now. And it creates a database of all the mods you have extracted. So this is the reason why it's not backwards compatible with any other version because the folder structure is completely different. The way it accesses the mods is completely different. And I did that to where when you click on the download mods, you will see update the database. You will see that it can compare the mods now. So I have installed version 1.0 and there's a 1.8 available. Before this, you would not be able to get this. So that's why I created the database inside the mod manager for the extracted mods to so I could compare these a lot better. So I can tell which ones you have installed, which ones you don't, which version you have, and everything else. Um, some of the changes that I made, now when you right click, it used to open the mod folder where the game creates the mods. Now it creates, it opens the mods folder. So this folder for this, so if you look at the leveling guide, you right click and select open mods folder. It's going to open the folder for that mod, particular mod. And that has the X mod file, the extracted mod. This is basically just all the changes that were made to the JSON files. And then the data file with the U asset files for the mod to work properly. Uh, you can also create a pack file if you want to share. Like if you make some changes to this mod in the editor, then you can share it by create pack file and it will create a pack file. Or you can create an xmods file. I highly recommend creating an xmods file because if you create an xmods file, it's not specific to that week. So once you create an xmods file and share it with somebody, you can keep sharing that file without having to worry about updating it every week. And then add all mods to this list here. If you want to add all the mods in your list. Uh, obviously I wouldn't do that because I have an excessive amount of mods. Um, but it's there in case you only have a few and you just want to add them to the list. So let me clear this list. So to add a mod, once you download the mods and it extracts them into here, you do not need to upload update these anymore. Unless it's something with the game changes drastically and it breaks the mod. But so if you have, uh, so like I have Dexter Haven's Labs, I don't need to re download this every week. All I have to do is just re add it to the list and add it to the game. Once it's extracted, it only, if I open the new editor, it only has the, ex the changed JSON files. So, like if you click on uh, like tool damage. It doesn't contain the whole file. It only contains the changes that he made. So this will get superimposed over top of the new one for next week and still remain up to date. So you don't have to worry about updating these every week. All you have to do is re-add them to your game every week. And I highly recommend using lists. So if you have, uh, say you add a bunch of mods that you like to play with all the time, you can simply select save list and it's going to pop this up and you can name it whatever you want. And click save. Play list. So then next week after the update, it will update the data folder. You go back into here, right click it, select load list, select the list you just made, and then click add listed mods. And as soon as that adds it to the game, you can now launch the game from inside I am Icarus mod manager and just launch the game and you're all set. You're all up to date. You don't need to re-download any of these mods in this list here.
So I highly recommend using list. It's I have all my lists for testing, my base mods for uh, open world and stuff like that. Um, testing, playlist for Olympus. You know, you can have as many lists as you want. And if there's certain people that you play with that play with mods too, you can actually create their name, save their name in there. So you'll know that when you play with that person, those are the mods that you use. So let me clear this list. Uh, some of the other features, you can now import an XMods file, um, extract mod from pack file. You could always, you could do that before, extract mod from folder. If you open up a mod in the editor, uh, reflex, you'll see at the top it has the name, author, version, description, and file name. So the name is just the display name. The author is who uh, who created the ver current version, and then a description, a short description. You don't want it too too big. And then the actual file name or the folder that this mod is stored in. So you'll see this has the underscores because this has to be Windows compatible with the file names. Even though you can have spaces, I, I just always try to keep spaces out of the mods here because of the I use the Unreal Pack and I'm not sure how compatible that is with spaces and characters in the file name so I always do it the old way um, but doing it this way so now when you extract a mod from a pack file if it doesn't have that information on it you will be asked to add it and it tries to get as much of it it can from the description in the pack file but you'll have to add the author that created the pack and stuff like that to make it working here to where you can see like the title up there the version and the name and then like uh, if it has an image and description and stuff like that and then these are all the files <coughs> excuse me uh, this is the check for update uh, this is separate from the 1.6.7 so if you're in 1.6.7 because it's not backwards compatible Check for update will not find this. You have to re-download this new version and then checking inside here will download any versions or any updates I make to the 2.0. Um, couple of new buttons. Remove all mods from the game. That's if you have two or three mods here because you were sharing mods or if you right click create pack mod or add mod to game. You can just simply just click that button and it will clear them all. And then if you want to open up your mods folder inside the games drive, that's what this button does. Since I changed this to actually just open up the mod folder where this mod is contained in, I added another button over here that will open up the Icarus. You can see it's Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Icarus, Icarus Content, Packs, Mods folder and the launch game button so what this does is it calls a link just like steam does to launch the game so any pre setup like if you have the uh, mod indicator disabled inside uh, steam it will still be disabled when you launch this so this simply calls that same link that you have set up in steam to launch the game so you no longer have to add the mod to the game close this open up your steam and click on the game it'll launch it in whatever default version of the game you have set up <coughs> uh, some of the other changes I've made to the editor so if you go into this is my still buildables mod click edit mod You'll see there's a couple new buttons, clean up JSON and view original. So if you were to work on this one and say you copied and pasted these from a different thing and you know the spacing's all messed up, 
stuff like that. You don't have to go through here and do all the space and stuff. Just click the cleanup. Oh, what I delete? I deleted something on that. Let me uh, re do that. Edit mod. So if you, oh, that's what I did. I selected that. All right. If you, if you delete those. And everything's kind of out of whack from copying and pasting. You can just click the clean up JSON button and it recleans it all up and then click save to save the changes. Uh, so now if you're editing a mod and say like the uh, items are, let's say the itemables, which contains the stack sizes. So you see the max stack size is 100. If there's an item you want to add to this and then change the max stack size before, you would have to actually find that file. Uh, now you can just click View Original. And if you click View Original, it's going to open that up in uh, Notepad, and you can see it's the original file from the game. So you can scroll down and select whatever item you want. So if you wanted... Uh, item combat knife to be able to stack you would just copy that you could go right back into itemable put it right there paste it um you don't need to fix it all just click clean up json and then it will automatically clean that all up for you to where where did I put that? Right here. It's where it's all nice and organized. But here's the combat knife. So that's just, uh, helps mod editors out a little bit to where if they need, if they forgot to add something to their mod, they can just click the view original, copy and paste it. As long as you make sure that you're doing the right f file and section. So if you're editing this, you obviously want to paste it into this section. And not a different section. So you can see that combat knife showed up. And then if I want to remove that again, you just got to go make sure you get the comma also. Delete. And like I said, just... Clean up the JSON and then itemable. You'll see the combat knife disappeared and everything's right back in order. And then always remember to click the save when you're done making changes. And then this is the reload mod file. So if for some reason you mess it up like I did where you delete the thing and then you go to click save or clean up JSON. It doesn't. You can click that button and it will actually reload it back in. Um, I think that's it for now. Uh, the developer form, that's only for people that develop mods. That's stayed the same so far. I didn't really make any changes. But, uh, it's been up for a couple weeks now, the beta version, and there hasn't been any reports of bugs. So, I'm hoping it's as solid as the 1.6.7 that's everybody's been using. Except it has the newer features and the new UI. So, uh, if you enjoy using it, uh, please consider donating and like and subscribe to this channel as I do a lot of uh, previews of mods I'm making and working on. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.